Are you sick of pruning and are looking for some low maintenance shrubs to add plenty of color and texture to your landscape? Well, look no further, you've landed on the right video. I'm about to show you the latest and greatest shrubs. Let's get started. If you remember last time we talked about Het's Midget Arborvitae, this is a similar shrub that I like even better. This is Danica Arborvitae. It gets about two to three foot tall. It's a dense, uh, dark emerald green. No pruning ever needed. It grows in a nice sort of mounded globe shape. And I did briefly mention Golden Globe and for the, for the sake of the viewers that are watching for the first time, I might go over some shrubs we've talked about before briefly. Golden Globe is one of those. It's a very beautiful gl globe-shaped gold uh, arborvitae, arborvitae being a western red cedar, similar to the Danica, but you got two different colors. And if we want to back on up over here, this is Barberry Admiration. And I have a lot of admiration for this shrub because it's so petite. It only grows about one to two foot tall. Got some fiery red foliage with some gold edges. That is a beautiful deer resistant shrub that I guarantee will add you plenty of color in your landscape. Now, some people like fries on the side. I like tater tots. This is tater tot arborvitae. It's a proven winter shrub. I like it better uh, than Danica if you need something even smaller. I know they're similar. This grows very petite and tiny. Like probably one of the most petite shrubs on the market today only growing about a foot, foot and a half, slow growing, great for containers or the landscape, especially if you have a small walkway. Now in that same relative category of being very petite, smaller shrub for a small walkway, let me show you Anna's Magic Ball, which is pretty much the gold version of Tater Tot. Anna's Magic Ball, again, slow growing. I've actually planted some of these along my walkway a couple years ago and maybe have four, five inches of growth since I've had them in two years. So you're not going to be pruning yourself to death on this one. Definitely a great <laughs> showpiece. Okay, moving right along, we have Cryptomeria globosa nana and no not that kind of nana like you grew up with this is nana as in dwarf so when you get cryptomeria globosis make sure it's the nana version that's going to be the dwarf version this is a very slow growing evergreen it's going to eventually reach three foot tall three foot wide but this has some of the best texture of any shrub i think i've ever seen let me go ahead and show this to you it's very frilly soft grows in a nice globe shape Okay, that did not work. Now, I wouldn't necessarily call this one low maintenance, especially if you want to keep it to a compact size, but I have to mention it because Sunshine Ligustrum or Privet is one of the coolest shrubs I think we have in stock. It's very gold, it's an evergreen, and I think it would pair very well with something like the Cryptomeria globosa, maybe putting these up front, sunshine in the back. Sunshine will get four or five foot tall or taller. You got to prune every once in a while to keep that shape, but that would just be beautiful together. Now, most of the shrubs I'm talking about, you're going to want to space about four feet apart. So let's say you have a 20 foot bed. You're going to use about five shrubs going through there. Five times four is 20. Yeah, I did that right. And moving right along, I have a new lore apetalum <laughs> or Chinese fringe flower. So last year we talked about Cerise Charm lore apetalum. These are the ones I have in my landscape. They're like a dark purple compact lore apetalum growing about three foot tall, three foot wide. What came out this year, thank you proven winners, is the Jazz Hands Mini. Now what I love about this one, it only gets about a foot tall but a few foot wide. So wider than it is tall, it's still evergreen. It's gonna have these beautiful dark pink flowers in the early springtime. And I think this could pair well with so many things. Stay right there. Like Anna's Magic Ball. So if I were to have this combo, I'd put Anna's Magic Ball up front, Jazz Hedden's Mini in the back, and then I'd probably do like a little stagger pattern with them. Let me show you something else 
you cannot overlook and that is grasses in your landscape no this is not a shrub but don't underestimate how um, grasses can just add that texture and give you a little different look this is uh, carex everillo it's a sedge grass it gets about a foot tall maybe two feet wide and this is going to look good with pretty much anything uh, laura petalums is going to look good with dark green shrubs like the tater tot i showed you that's going to be a good little uh, low maintenance uh, combination there and then like something like blue star juniper um, absolutely love this one have these two one foot tall a couple feet wide evergreen blue foliage look at this color combination that's gorgeous all right moving right along i'm going to show you three nandinas in a row this one's called flirt this is the most low maintenance smallest growing nandina on the market today flirt's going to get one to two foot tall and wide it is going to turn more red when the weather changes and gets cooler uh, otherwise it's going to have a green and red combination and it does have an interesting feathery texture i really like it and then there's the gold version called lemon lime nandina now lemon lime is a little more upright it probably will reach about three foot tall a couple feet wide but lime green foliage year round so you pair this with um, say a dark chloropetalum or um, a darker green shrub or the barberry admiration hang on maybe putting the barberry admiration up front the gold nandina in the back and just that red and gold combo beautiful your neighbors were going to fall over and not know what to do with themselves they're going to pull up all their stuff and try to copy you, but you won't know how because you landed on the best channel s and k greenhouse <laughs> and then finally we have what uh southern living they've come out with all these nandinas this is obsession obsession is going to get about three to four feet tall so a little bit taller but still low maintenance on the scale of things because those older nandinas um like um what's the one i'm thinking of gulf stream it's going to get kind of tall and leggy over time this one's going to stay nice and compact and when the weather cools off it's going to turn really red oh there's not a tag in this one to show you but it's beautiful last year i don't know if you remember we talked about abelia kaleidoscope just because it's got that tropical foliage it's an evergreen it's like a three by three and you get white blooms in the spring i showed you with how how good it looks with the lower pedalum well this is not a new abelia but i didn't have it last time and i gotta show you it's even more compact it's called radiance and it has a beautiful variegated foliage it's got the creamy white edges with the darker green leaves it does bloom white in the spring and then you get some sporadic blooms in the summer and i love how this one just grows in a natural uh, globe shaped fashion absolutely beautiful in the landscape and nothing else quite looks like it oh i thought this was a basketball no it's just orange and round like a basketball because this is fire chief arborvitae you know i love arborvitaes i talk about them all the time on this channel this one is no exception very low growing slow growing gets about three foot by three foot no pruning ever needed now i put these in my landscape and i love them i paired them with cerise charm laura Petalum, and people are slamming on their brakes left and right trying to see what's in my landscape because it's so colorful and i just love the texture combination now if you wanted to and you had a really wide or deep landscape bed you could say put another uh lower pedal here and another fire chief right here and then up front you could throw in some blue star junipers and that would give you another texture and color and of course the blue star would lay low to the ground and then you would have this um tiered effect with the lower pedalum and the fire chief i think that would look absolutely beautiful but if you want to come on down 
and see lemony lace. This is another um, proven winter product. It, I love it because it looks like a Japanese maple, but you don't have to pay the price that you would for a Japanese maple. It has these lacy leaves, uh, lime green, and I just think it's beautiful for like an accent or a specimen. I actually have one of these in my landscape too. It gets about maybe four feet tall. Now in the south where I am, zone 7B in Shelby, North Carolina, it's going to benefit greatly for, uh, with some afternoon shade rather. Now depending on where you live, it might can take full sun, but don't be afraid to throw it in shade. It's a really great specimen. And then right here is Jazz Hands Variegated Loripetalum. I did talk about this one last time on the channel. This is going to be good if like you have um, maybe some windows that are a little bit taller and you need to fill in this whole space. Jazz Hands is going to be great for that. It's going to get about four feet tall, four feet wide. It pairs really well with other green or gold or red shrubs. And you're also going to get this beautiful variegation starting now in the fall look at that look at that combination right there that's just so pretty it's like a tricolored leaf and then you still get the neon pink blooms in the springtime now nothing's going to go with it <laughs> better than candy corn spirea this is the most low maintenance spirea on the market today it's from proven winners it does lose its leaves but guess what in March and spring, when it starts warming up, it has cherry, fiery red new growth, followed by some very interesting leaves that are gold and orange. And might I add that you do get these beautiful purple blooms in the spring and summer. And this just makes for a really great, you guessed it, low maintenance shrub. Let's talk about some shade shrubs for all you people that's got a lot of shade. Maybe you got some trees and some coverage and it's shading out things and you're getting sad because you're like, all these shrubs he's showing is for sun. Not Mountain Fire Pieris. This is one of the best shade evergreens on the market. No, I'm not kidding. The, the new growth on these is fiery red. And then what other, bloom, what other shrub is going to bloom in January, February? That's right, this is gonna have some clusters of white blooms that are absolutely gorgeous. I also have these in my landscape on the shady side of my house that rarely get, they rarely see sun, especially in the winter time. And these things just make an outstanding show, but not as outstanding as Banana Peel Elysium. Another name for this is Anise. It's very fragrant. This is an improved version from Florida Sunshine, which gets a little bit taller. This one stays very compact. I love it. It grows about three foot tall, three feet wide. It is an evergreen and you got this gold foliage year round. So in a shady area, this is really going to pop. I also got to mention Duke Gardens U. This is an evergreen. It's deer resistant. It's got a fun texture. It's very slow growing. And eventually, yes, it will get three or four foot tall and wide. Pruning is absolutely approved. You can shape this into a ball, shape it into a rectangle, or you can let it grow wild. Do you miss her? You know, we haven't talked about her in a while. You know, Holly, what was her name? Carissa Holly. Well, I've got her right here. Now I've got actually two Hollies. I've got Soft Touch Holly and Carissa Holly and they could not be more opposite. Carissa is a very prickly Holly. This is actually grown in front of places you want to keep maybe animals or birds out of because it's prickly and they won't land on it. Soft touch holly, however, is the complete opposite. It's a Japanese holly, got a very softy, uh, softy, I don't know if that's a word, but a very soft texture. And this one's going to grow very low to the ground, you know, maybe a three by three or a two by three, sort of that mounded habit. Whereas Carissa will get a little bit taller, 
more more like three or four foot tall three or four foot wide but great little evergreens and sometimes it's good to just have a holly in the landscape every once in a while we have baby gem boxwood and baby gem boxwood is another southern living plant uh, it was developed several years back but it's very good because it's low maintenance for a boxwood there are some smaller growing boxwoods this one's still going to get about three or four foot tall but it's an excellent little evergreen shade or sun and you can shape it how you want it and it makes a heck of a hedge uh, accent plants border plants I, I, you can't leave out boxwoods and i will touch on these we did talk about them last time encore azaleas and i think they come in every single color under the sun we have autumn majesty that's a beautiful lilac color this is um, autumn bonfire which is a pretty much like a true red we have royalty and twist royalty is going to be a dark purple and then twist is actually not blooming right now but when it is that's royalty too aha i have found some twists that are blooming this is autumn twist and it has got a beautiful variegated pink and purple bloom now if you don't know about encore azaleas they are great because they rebloom multiple times a year so you get that big flush in the spring but then you get some more scattered blooms summer into fall and yes it's an evergreen they are pretty low maintenance they don't get leggy and big like the old ones they're going to stay in that three foot by four foot or four foot by four foot range and you can prune them and shape them however you want I cannot leave out Mr. Bowling Ball Arborvitae. Gosh, I talk about Arborvitaes a lot because that's just, they're just no fuss plants. They don't get disease. They don't get bagworms usually. They don't get spider mites, all these insects that we have problems with here in the South. They don't get rust. Um, Mr. Bowling Ball is a mounded shape Arborvitae. So it, it usually gets about 30 inches tall and then it mounds out and it keeps a bluish uh, hue to it year round and I think it just looks excellent. And while we're on the subject of Arborvitaes, I've got one you're gonna love. Raise your hand if you're wanting a small tree that you can grow in a container or put in your landscape, maybe in a corner planting that will not grow into a full blown tree and have shallow roots and not rip up your foundation. Introducing my buddy Morgan, not Morgan Wallen. I can't Morgan Arborvitae. Morgan Arborvitae is going to get probably only ever two to three foot tall and maybe one to two foot wide. It's going to keep a beautiful green and gold foliage year round, nice and soft texture. Again, you put that in a container, even in the dead of winter, it's going to give you color. You could put some nice pansies or annuals around it, and that would just be a beautiful, beautiful Arborvitae. We've got to talk about one of my favorite low maintenance evergreen ground covers. This is Snow and Summer Asiatic Jasmine. It has beautiful new growth, white and pink. And in the dead of winter, you're going to get dark green foliage. It still looks great. This only gets maybe a foot tall, several feet wide, spreads nice and dense. I love this ground cover. And now I'm bringing back with me two of my favorite gardenias on the market today. We have Heaven Scent, and boy does it smell heavenly, and we have Jubilation, and this one is actually in bloom, and it smells so good. Look at the double bloom. Okay, so Jubilation is a little bit larger growing than Heaven Scent. Heaven Scent's very compact, uh, definitely a good container shrub, or if uh, good for uh, borders or walkways, this is only going to get one or two foot tall, a couple feet wide. Jubilation is a re-blooming gardenia, believe it or not. So instead of just getting that big flush in late spring, you're getting blooms right now in the month of August. And this one's going to get about three to four foot tall and wide. I'm going to mention this shrub in every video I possibly can. I talk about it all the time. Forever Goldie Arborvitae. I love this shrub. This is the one I talk about so much. I have two of them in my yard. They're doing great. 
This is an excellent corner plant, uh, corner planting shrub, if that makes sense. Great for corner plantings. Like let's say you have a stairway and you want something on either side, something that's not gonna get too big and tall. Uh, this will grow pretty fat, maybe three to four foot wide, but only about five or six foot tall. And you get this beautiful bright green gold foliage. You guessed it, year round. I know what you're thinking. I'm tired of all these evergreens. Show me something that blooms and gives me some color. I wanna hear about that texture and, and, and color you were talking about in the beginning of the video. I need something low maintenance. How about Penicetum, which is a fountain grass, Hamlin Dwarf. This is one of my favorite grasses. Look at how pretty this is. It starts to bloom late summer all through fall. The other times of the year, you do get this uh, dark green grass, but what I love about it, it stays compact. It's only ever gonna get about as tall as you see it right now, two, maybe three foot max, and spread a couple feet. It's not gonna be like your pompous grass where you're out there burning it down and sawing it with a chainsaw. No, this is a pretty little grass for a landscape. And if that don't float your boat, how about this tiny wine nine bark? Now for a nine bark, this does stay compact, maybe about three or four foot wide, four or five foot tall. And again, for a nine bark, that's very compact. Proven Winners came out with this one not too long ago. It's got a burgundy maroon foliage and the flowers on these are absolutely stunning. White, gorgeous blooms. And if you're still not satisfied, check out Pugster Blue. Now, every time I show somebody a butterfly bush, they're like, no way, that's never gonna fit in my landscape because you see these big, huge, massive butterfly blooms in people's yards, not Pugster Blue. Look, butterfly, Monarch just flew by us, not Pugster Blue. It's gonna get about two foot tall, two foot wide. Once it starts blooming, you can't stop it. It's gonna bloom until frost. And these blooms are so vibrant, I don't even need to put a picture up on the screen because you could see it right there. I know this is not a shrub. Yes, it's a tree, but it is a small and compact tree and it's perfect for that accent or uh, maybe you have a spot on the corner of your house that you need something that fills up the space but doesn't get gigantic. Let me introduce you to Golden Falls Redbud. This, this tree will only ever get about as tall as it is now because the top leader has been trained to go down. So now it's only going to get full. So if you find these at your local garden center, they're probably only ever going to get five, six foot tall, about four foot wide. And just like other red buds in the spring, you get those neon pink blooms in the early spring. And then it turns into this beautiful gold foliage the rest of the year. And you just can't hardly beat it. And you've seen me talk about Let's Dance Rhythmic Blue. Well, this is Let's Dance Blue Jangles, which is an even smaller, compact, big leaf hydrangea. This is gonna start blooming uh, late summer into fall. Now, it's not blooming now because it's been pruned back and it's been grown in a container, but as it come up, as it, if it comes up on your own, it's gonna bloom on new or old growth. And of course, you can change the blooms to pink if you have um, a sweeter soil and if you have more of acidic soil you can change them to blue and for a compact hydrangea one that would grow great in a container or a small landscape bed it's going to be hard to beat this one all right you're asking what the heck am i doing well i'm, I'm showing you some really great low maintenance privacy screen trees these are not going to get out of control and you're not going to prune yourself to death on them this is Cripsi chemicypris. It's actually a golden hinoki. It's gonna get about 10 feet tall, six to eight foot wide, stays beautiful uh, gold all year round, even in the dead of winter, and it's gonna be very deer tolerant. And then right here, we have Green Giant Arborvitae. Now, Green Giant's gonna get a little bit bigger. This is really gonna fill in some larger areas, but it still keeps a nice, compact, like dense, uh, manicured look to it very pyramidal but it's going to get about 25 feet by 10 feet so this is a this is something i'd plant if i was doing a row of these to for some privacy i'd probably space them about eight feet apart and then right here we have emerald green arborvitae again it doesn't take a lot of pruning or no pruning at all really to make it look nice and manicured and dense 
It's gonna keep a dark emerald green foliage year round. It grows about eight to 10 feet tall, four feet wide. So I would space those about four to five foot wide if you're trying to make a, a screen. And either one of these options is great. It's just kind of dependent on your needs. Now let me teach you about a new grass. It's called Miscanthus Fire Dragon. And what I love about Miscanthus Fire Dragon is going into fall when the weather cools off, it turns bright red. Now for a Miscanthus, it stays pretty nice and compact. It's gonna get five or six foot you know, tall, maybe four foot wide, but it has a beautiful lime green foliage and you still get the white feathery blooms this time of year. And when it's cold and you walk outside and you see these flames, I mean, it's not gonna get much prettier for a grass. All right, you've stuck around this far and I'm gonna reward you for doing so. I'm gonna show you two of my favorite low maintenance trees that would make a really great corner planting and not overtake your space. Introducing Redbud called Ruby Falls. Now Ruby Falls it was in William's garden tour video. If you've not watched that, I suggest you check it out. It was the most outstanding specimen I have ever seen in a landscape, especially for a small compact tree. In the spring, it has neon pink blooms that look gorgeous. And then the rest of the year, you get this purple cascading foliage. It's a true standout. It's gonna pop with some of your gold shrubs, like I showed you earlier, like the candy corn spirea, or maybe like the golden globe arborvitae, or maybe the banana peel elysium, or the sunshine ligustrum, or the fire chief arborvitae. Those are all gonna look great with this. And you're just not gonna find a tree that doesn't overtake a space like Ruby Falls. And then you've got a run another red bud that I don't have in stock all the time. It's called Flamethrower. This is one of the hottest trees on the market right now because in the spring when it leaves out, it's crazy. It doesn't even look real. It looks photoshopped when it leaves out in the spring. And again, in the early spring before it leaves out, you do get those neon pink blooms. But Redbud Flamethrower is gonna get about 15 foot tall, about 15 foot wide. And yes, that's pretty big, but on the scale of things for a tree, not so bad. Well folks, I hope that gives you some ideas and inspiration about some low maintenance shrubs to put around your house. If you're local, feel free to come over here in Shelby, North Carolina and visit us. And I'll be glad to personally help you with your landscape plans, show you some ideas of some shrubs that can go in your landscape. And if you're not local and you wanna support the channel, we just dropped these awesome t-shirts on our website. Free shipping, by the way, skgreenhouses.com. Link is in the description, or you can click the product tab on the screen. And until next time, become a plant person. <laughs>